<laughs> Lights! Camera! Shenanigans! Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today we are going to talk about dry boxes. Filament dryers. Bit of a controversial subject in some people's minds. Do you need to dry filament? Is drying filament really necessary? Is it a gimmick? Does it really affect the quality of your prints? All I can say guys is through my own personal experience I 100% believe that humidity causes problems with certain types of filament. There's a little bit of a misconception around cold damp weather, how you store your filament, or all of these types of things. Oh well I haven't kept my filament in a bucket of water. When we refer to filament as being wet, we don't refer to it in that sense of being wet. I will try and explain briefly what we mean by wet filament. Some plastics are hydroscopic. This means that they are susceptible to absorbing moisture or humidity from the air. Now here in the UK currently we are in the summertime. The humidity gauge in the workshop is currently reading 57% relative humidity. That humidity is basically moisture that has evaporated into the air and is circling around. Your filament is sat in an open space exposed to this humidity the filament will absorb that humidity. I'm not going to give exact numbers because it probably would vary from spool to spool, material type, all that type of thing. We find the most hydroscopic filaments, first and foremost, everybody's favourite dreaded enemy, PETG. A lot of people have been swayed from printing PETG because it is hydroscopic. And if you don't store it in an airtight bag or you don't dry it prior to printing with it after it's been left out for weeks on end, you will have problems printing with it. Once you dry it, it's a whole different ball game. It is easier to print, in my opinion, with PETG than it is PLA because the bed addition is second to none. The actual strength of the finished print is amazing. The print finish is also really, really nice. So for those of you who are scared about printing PETG or have had failed attempts at printing PETG, definitely consider a dryer because you will have such a different experience. Other examples, one thing that we get asked quite a lot is, why is my PLA snapping? Simple case, your PLA is snapping because it has absorbed too much moisture from the air and it has become brittle. If you dry it in a filament dryer, it will resort back to its flexible normal manner. It's beneficial, shall I say, to also dry ASA and ABS. While they're not overly hydroscopic, what you will find is that they will absorb a slight amount of moisture and when you have your print finished you will notice pretty much that you'll have like little as i can only describe blisters or blemishes to the surface this can also affect layer adhesion because what you have to imagine is inside the filament you have absorbed this humidity from the air as you're then extruding the filament for a very very hot nozzle over 100 degrees which is over boiling point the humidity the water vapour boils off into steam, which the steam has to escape from the printed part one way or another, and it literally pops out of the surface as it cools, causes these blemishes. In extreme cases, it will really, really impact your layer adhesion. So you'll print on the same settings that you have previously without any problems. You've left a spool out in a rather humid environment for a prolonged period of time, gone to print with it again, and you found that the structural integrity of your print is absolutely abysmal. That is because it is wet and it needs drying. So, I've used quite a lot of dryers in my time, and my favourite go-to is the Polymaker Poly Dryer. The reason I like this so much is because it's available in two formats. Here, we have the actual dryer format, which, as you can see, on the bottom, we have a block with a little screen controls whatever else if i take the dryer off the top and show you in here you have basically where the heat and the air circulates so what this does is it generates heat and then it circulates the air through because the air circulation is a critical part to your drying process some of the other dryers on the market don't have that functionality so literally all you do is you put your filament into the dryer you close the lid there's no fan in there you turn the heater on and it basically heats to like a sauna. So there's nowhere for the humidity to escape. So really it's not drying your filament at all. 
It's just heating everything and you have to then periodically open and close the lid to release the humidity. This system works really, really well. Poly dryer has three settings. So we've got level one, which you would typically dry your PLA on, which will heat to 50 degrees. PLA is a very, very low glass transitional point so you don't need to dry it at excessive temperatures because if you do do that you can end up with a mush ball basically fused to your spool in the dryer no nice 50 degrees pla setting one bingo next up you have level two we have level two which reaches 60 degrees now 60 degrees you would typically use for your your pet g tpu the mid-range filaments if you like so you'd select setting two pop your filament in set the time leave it let it count down keep your eye on the humidity gauge you have level three this is the supreme super deluxe level this reaches a top temperature of 70 degrees typically 70 degrees is what you want to be drying abs and asa at also pc absolutely perfect for drying those kind of filaments you can buy the the complete unit as a standalone unit which is currently retailing for for 72 pounds so for that you get the box the dryer we do get two ptfe tubes and again i'll explain what these are for in more detail in a minute you get stoppers and again i'll show you what these do just remove the lid you also get a spoolie doodly holder this little doobly here which literally slots in inside the dry box now the purpose of this is if you have the smaller spools of filament, either this size or like the 250 gram spools, the very, very small ones, you can literally pop that through there, drop it in your dryer and feed straight out the dry box. If you don't need that and you have a full size spool, they have it covered as well, because in the bottom, you have two little rollers that run on ball bearings. So you can literally drop your filament in and it will act as a, a spool holder. Here we have the lid with the, the cam latch catches. So if you look in the lid, you can see here, you've got a very, very thick rubber seal that is recessed. Now that seal sits very nicely over this raised lip. So we basically drop the lid on like so, and you really have to press and lock this down. And it locks snug. If I was to do a smoke test on this seal, I, I don't think any smoke would escape really good air seal i mean these latches are not at all flimsy and the lid is solid and rigid and it is a quality piece of kit you know it's really nicely made now the other thing that you can do is if you look at the box in a couple of locations you've got these little stoppers which have rubber caps on because ultimately you want to keep the box sealed so if you want to print from this box you can do it very very simply by grabbing ptfe tubes opening the stopper, inserting it in, feed your filament into it, whichever path is the cleanest and offers the least resistance. Typically on, on a machine, like the high that we have in this one set up here, the top is ideal. The spool will come out, so the filament is running up through the tube into the extruder. I have it set up on my Voron. I use the, the front hole because it makes an easier route in that way around. So basically just rotate your filament spool to offer the least resistance for the path that you are going to take with your ptfe bowden tube this is a very oversized tube so this will give you zero friction it's a very big center bore so you're not going to get any snagging or dragging or or anything like that on the actual base you have a number of different settings so it's telling you here typical drying time for pla you're going to be using six hours on power level one we've got pet g ABS, ASA, TPU, PVB. Now they give it all separate times and that is on setting two. Typically if I'm drying ABS, I dry at the higher temperature. I dry it at 70 degrees. That's just what I find works well for me. Setting three on here is saying that we can dry PC, PA and PVA. Personal preference really. There's a guide there with some times that it's suggested that you will need to dry the filament on. Ultimately, the drying time will really depend on how wet the filament is. If it's absolutely sodden, PLA is going to take longer than six hours to dry, typically. So inside the box, when you get the box and you take the box out of the box, so you're doing an unboxing of the box, this little gizmo here is separate. So they'll give you a little sachet of silica beads. Basically, you unclip the front, you fill this little container here with silica beads which has the humidity gauge 
pre-fitted in there. Now, the purpose of the silica beads is for the next party trick that this piece of equipment has. Once you've dried your filament, you want to keep it dry. So very simply, you've dried it. In the bottom here, we have two gaping holes. They give you some nice little stoppers. So you literally press them into place. There is rubber gaskets on them, so it actually gives you a really good seal. On the bottom of the rubber stoppers, you've got rubber feet, so it doesn't slide. Perfecto. So now this is a storage box. You can buy these on their own. So you can have as many of these little storage boxes as you want, but they all interface with the dryer. So the storage boxes standalone units, which come, as I say, complete with the PTFE tubes, the humidity gauge, the spool holder, the bearing spool runners, the silica bees, all of that jazz. They are currently on the website for £27.90, which is a really good deal. They are a really snug, nice fit. Again, lid sealed. This is a proper airtight container that is going to ensure your filament stays dry once you've dried it. The silica beads are basically set in there to keep the filament dry. So if any moisture or whatever does get into the box or there is any remnants of moisture left in the filament the silica beads will help to draw that out the other little thing there is a whole host of mods for this setup because it's proven to be such a versatile system the inventors the makers the creators of the 3d printing community have engineered print files and made parts and accessories to allow you to do all kinds of weird and wonderful things with this setup this one in particular, the double barrel mod. Now, I hadn't actually seen this until Chris, the cameraman, credit to Chris where credit's due. He has found this file, he has printed it out, and basically what this allows you to do is if you pop this little stand over the vents, you can then place two poly boxes when you remove the stoppers on top of this and dry two boxes with one base unit. Wow. The double barrel mod was printed in our own brand ABS. We've selected ABS because of the heat. ABS, it won't be affected by this amount of heat. But as you can see, really nice print quality, nice strong print, nice finish, no stringing, really good layer addition. So yeah, check out that link in the description. Also, there is a whole host of different upgrades, mods and everything else for it. But overall, it's a really, really, really versatile system that I don't believe to be an extortionate price point i mean ultimately for those of you who print with more exotic filaments or you just want to make sure that everything is kept as it should be organized well these make an ideal solution because literally if you do want to print and dry you can some filaments pc in particular i know a lot of people like to print pc as it's drying because they want to try and maintain a certain amount of ambient temperature on the filament before it even hits the extruder because they find the print quality is that little bit better and if you're in a really really humid room and you've got a long print on the go and you've got your spool of pc filament sat in the open and that's constantly sucking up moisture while you're printing you could see the print quality deteriorate over a period of time so this box is an ideal solution i know a lot of the more exotic filaments require storage in a dry box of some form or another so it is definitely a worthy consideration i have done lots and lots of experimentation with filaments that have been left out in damp conditions sheds workshops garages work yeah anywhere basically that's you know cold and damp it doesn't really seem to be the cold damp environment that causes the problem it's more the hot humid environments so there's a little bit of misconception there i've had chats with customers via email and phone i've got this filament it keeps on snapping in my bowden tube can you tell me why firstly what filament is oh it's pla where are you storing your filament Oh, I'm storing it in my house, right next to the radiator. Okay, there's your humidity, straight away. Don't do that. No, move it away from the radiator with the washing on. Move it away from your tumble dryer. Keep it in a nice sealed box. That way, you will have really nice, consistent quality prints time and time and time again. That is it. The proof really is in the pudding. If you leave a filament out for a long time and then you try to pull it off a spool, I don't know if we've got any knocking about here that I can demonstrate with. It's not, I mean, that isn't even that bad. As an example, so I've just literally bent that back on itself and it has started to break. 
that isn't overly overly moist yet what you'll typically find is it is if you you bend it like to that point it will physically snap you will be able to tell categorically that the filament has become brittle well it wasn't like that when i first bought it no it wasn't it was dry then it's been left out in the open it sucked all this humidity in and it has made it brittle first thing bend it back if you get to that sort of, well there you go you see you just snapped now if we dried this filament you probably ought to bend it back on itself like that and it wouldn't snap it would just stress typically that's how you would gauge if you pop that in there and leave it for a bit you would probably see that humidity gauge like raised through the roof now brings me on to my next point typically when i'm drying filament regardless to the material type i'll try and dry it to all of the same sort of range now for me personally i see good results anything below 30 percent if i've got below 30 percent relative humidity in my dryer i'm quietly confident that my filament will print okay but the lower i can get that the better i find the print quality to be this box in particular i've had filament dried down to as low as 17 percent, which i was absolutely amazed at because every other dryer i've used I've never been able to get this humidity that low. It was ridiculous. So anything below 30 is acceptable. The lower you can get it, the better. Typically anything over 50, 100%, without even wasting any of your print time, dry it. Simple as that. Don't even bother wasting your time. If it's over 50%, get it in the dryer. Dry it to at least 30 before you start to print. So I think that concludes this video. Overall, really, really impressive piece of the kit. I hope you've found it informative, intuitive, or even had a laugh at my expense. Needless to say, it is a topic that we've not really touched on on the channel before, and we see repeated discussions, debates on social media, conversations with people and everything else. For me, and I'm sure others will agree, dry filament is happy filament. That's it from me. Goodbye for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. The links for this product or these products will be in the description. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments box below, and I shall see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description, and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.